Welcome back to E Roddick the Brand. Hi, I am your host and favorite dating and sex coach, Eden Lee Middleman, here. Good, healthy relationships do indeed have arguments, disagreements. They have bumps in the road, they have rough patches. It is normal. And oftentimes, these rough patches are there as obstacles for you to climb together while holding hands, moving through the motions together as a team and coming out the other side. This improves your relationship. I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but like every time I have an argument in my relationship, I feel like we're 10 times better afterwards. Like we're 10 times more in love. We're 10 times more excited to be around each other's company. Like we're so happy and thankful a that like, okay, shit, that's done. But also b that we've learned something about each other or that we feel like we've resolved something before I get into this video and I give you some tips and tricks and things to do, like literally write this shit down. I want to remind you guys that arguments that occur all the time about the same issue means that there is some unresolved shit. Oftentimes couples who have swept things under the rug for many months or years do require couples therapy because there's so much more to unpack. We are not brought up with these skills to be therapists in a relationship, nor should we. We should be equal partners who respect one another and do our very best. However, there are some points sometimes in some relationships that are A, just unhealthy and toxic that you must exit. B, that require a therapist or a mediator in the middle, an unbiased person to be able to not only show you guys how to communicate, but also delegate who speaks when they speak, when someone needs to speak, because the way we deal with conflict is different. Your partner most likely has a different way of dealing with conflict than you do. I'll give you my personal example. I am a very vocal, communicative person. I need to get shit resolved when it happens. I don't like to go to bed angry. And that's one of my biggest rules in relationships not to do that. However, there were people that I was in relationships with where they were very quiet. They would just contract inward and not speak. And I felt like I was just a broken record everything I said was just falling on deaf ears and there was no headway. And I always felt like I need to be the mediator, the therapist, honor my feelings, honor his feelings and go back and forth. And that was always unfair. So if you feel like you're in that situation, you do need to stop and you do need to vocalize to your partner that you cannot be the therapist for the two of you, that you require them showing up in those moments of conflict. Some people want to, and some people just don't. And sometimes When you go through the heat of the moment, and this is why I always say, you know if it's a good life partner, if you guys deal with conflict in a good manner. It's not going to feel good, but you guys are healthy about it. You guys are a team. You guys are not versing each other. You guys are not throwing each other under the bus, swearing at each other, raising your voices at each other, getting really hot and heavy, ignoring each other, silent treatment. This is all forms of emotional abuse, by the way, that nobody likes to speak on because everyone just says, oh, couples arguing. That's normal. That's normal. How are you arguing? Arguing is normal, but the way in which you argue can differentiate between two healthy people or two very toxic people or one healthy person and the other person just does not want to meet the other person in the middle. And that is when you have to reevaluate your relationship. Again, guys, you don't need something big to cause a breakup. You don't need a big deal to cause a breakup. You just need to feel as though you are not being respected. You are not being honored. That other person is not trying to work with you to say, you know what, do I want this as a lifelong partner? The answer should be no if you're a self-respecting person. So now that we got that out of the way, let's discuss how to deal with an argument, conflict, whatever the case may be. If it is a matter of somebody cheated on somebody, somebody completely lied to somebody, somebody did something terrible. At that point, it shouldn't be an argument. It should just be you did what you did. I'm going to choose to end, end the relationship. Because unfortunately, to build trust after something so traumatic like that is extremely difficult or near impossible for some people. And that is okay. Sometimes that is the ending of the relationship and you need to come to terms with that. However, if we're not talking about something like that, we're talking about arguments throughout, you know, life, shit gets difficult. You need to both. And rule number one is hold space and invite them to talk. Even if you don't want to talk about this, if there's conflict, you need to talk about it. I don't care If you're the type of person that needs some time, eventually you're going to need to talk about it and you need to let your partner know that, hey, I do need some time. I will come to you and speak to you. There needs to be initiative. There needs to be somebody that is communicating with the other person, even if they don't want to communicate, even if you have nothing to say in that moment. Hey, right now, I don't have much to say about it. I'm not saying I don't want to speak on it. That's reassurance that you must give your partner through those moments. You also have to have a time limit. If you do not want to discuss something now, there is such thing as taking like breathers and timeouts, which can 
can be beneficial for those people who have a hard time processing certain things or might be very reactive. Doing that is a great practice. However, there needs to be a time limit and you need to let your partner know. Otherwise, it can be taken as a silent treatment and as a form of emotional abuse where this person is boiling up inside and desperately wants to resolve things and talk about things and the other person in their eyes seem like they don't care. And that is where a lot of couples break down. If you come across like you don't care, even if you do care, if you're not being open, if you're not communicating, how is your partner supposed to know? We are not mind readers. Okay, even if you've known them for years, you cannot expect someone to understand what you're thinking, how you're feeling, or how you want to deal with this if you don't vocalize it. And this was something that I had to learn that was very difficult for me. Because like I said, I want to deal with it now. Right away, I want to get over with. I don't want it to pour into a new day. I'm very like, you know, time is valuable. I don't want to waste time on shit that we can resolve. Let's resolve it. Let's talk about it. Let's learn. Let's grow from it. Work as a team and let's move on. But I have had partners that need that time. And I used to never honor the fact that they needed time because I was like, oh my God, you're ignoring me. You don't want to deal with it. I always have to like, you know, offer you an olive branch and do all of these things. I'm sick and tired of it. And it's like, you hurt me. And now I have to put my feelings aside to come and meet you. And that's not fair. And da, 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 da. And then I just become resentful and angsty and even more pissed off. And therefore, I'm even more in my feels, which doesn't allow me to think clearly or calmly. And so I come across more aggressive. So you can hold space. You should hold space. Not everybody needs it. Ideally, dealing with the situation when it happens is probably the best case scenario. But not everybody can or feels like it's best for them, which is fine. You need to know that and you need to communicate that if you're the person that needs the time to talk about it. Now, inviting space means even if you don't understand why your partner is pissed, If you see that something's bothering them, invite them to talk about it. Some people walk around with like a frowny face waiting for their partner to be like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? What's going on? And like oftentimes most girls, like girls were guilty of this. And sometimes guys, like everything's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Because they're hoping it'll be fine as time goes on. But time doesn't always heal. If the core issue has not been dealt with, has not been touched, has not been dissected, has not been spoken about together, it's only going to bury itself deeper. And eventually it's going to come up in other arguments. So this is how you prevent snowball effects from happening in relationships. And this is what a lot of people are guilty of doing. They're just like, you know what I'm picking my battles the beauty of that saying is picking your battles is important if it's something small and stupid but if it's something that still lingers for a long time or it's the same theme that keeps being brought up the same kind of shit that keeps being brought up it's no longer something that you can ignore and that you're going to avoid this battle you have to go face fucking first through this ring of fire deal with it so that this won't be an issue down the line we are trying to be proactive and preventative when it comes to conflict resolutions in relationships how does inviting someone to talk look like it is okay you said you were okay i it doesn't seem like you are I'm here. I want you to speak to me. Come sit down next to me. If you want to talk, I'm all ears. You know, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here to answer them. I know we spoke about it seven times. I don't care. It's fine. We'll speak about it till you're good. What you do in that situation, honestly, what it's just genius. What you do in that situation is you reassure your partner. You make them feel like they can speak to you at their own time, at their own pace, that you are not annoyed by the fact that they may be bringing something up that maybe wasn't resolved in the past currently. And it shows that you care. The number one theme that you're going to understand from this video is that when you're dealing with conflict, it's all about does this person care? I think that that's the common question that comes up in our minds when we're dealing with conflict. When we're like in a funk or when we don't like what our partner did or when there was a bit of a disagreement or or an argument, like you're fighting, fighting, quote unquote fighting, right? Arguing because you both want this to be done. You both want the same things. You both want each other to care enough to deal with the situation, to be all hands on deck, to work together and to move on from it. Make amends. Regardless of where you're at, it's all about do you care? Do you care? I want to talk to you. Do you care enough? And that is why people who need time to be silent, to be in their own little world, to sleep on things. Sometimes you might come across as you don't care. So communicating is so important to be like, I care. I want to fix this. I want to be there for you and I want to make this relationship work. However, right now I need just like a little time out to just be with myself for a minute and I promise you I will come to you and I will speak to you. That gives the other person a little bit of a, it gives them this sense of relief, reassurance and okay, they care. They will deal with this. 
Okay, I'm not being neglected. The issue is not being neglected or swept under the rug. When you invite your partner to talk to you, understand that you are not arguing. You are having a discussion. A discussion requires two people actively involved in conversation. That is why it's called discussion. You are discussing. This person is discussing. We're going back and forth and discussing. We're acknowledging each other's thoughts and feelings, even if we don't understand them, even if we don't agree with it per se, but we acknowledge that your partner is hurt. Sometimes, guys, it doesn't really matter what we're arguing about. It matters about how the other person is feeling in that moment. Be like, I understand that you feel this way. Okay. And currently I'm feeling this way. And so I'm not undermining your feeling or trying to overshadow your feeling or whatever. I am aware that you're feeling this way. I might not understand the situation, but I want to help. What can we do? Sometimes just stating the obvious allows the other person who's going through this turmoil to be like, okay, so they understand. They get that I'm feeling this way. I don't have to keep talking about that I'm feeling upset or angry or you did this or you did that. I don't have to go there because I was just reassured that they're aware. You have to show your partner that you're understanding them. And how can you show them that? Because nodding your head and not saying anything and letting them speak really doesn't acknowledge the fact that you're fully listening and fully understanding. Okay, that is just very basic surface level way of showing that you might be engaged. But a lot of us zone the fuck out and nod our heads or look away or whatever. So that is why tone, body language, eye contact is super important on top of communicating what you understand from the conversation. So if you don't know what to say when you're dealing with conflict, you can and should be saying, okay, so I understand that you're upset about this and this and this. I didn't mean to do that. Honestly, I was feeling this way and... I know that we're trying to problem solve here. What do you think is the best course of action? I think this is the best course of action. Maybe we can compromise on that. Maybe we can figure it out. You're literally just regurgitating whatever the conversation was, adding maybe a fresh new thought or, you know, adding your feelings into it and then throwing the ball back at the other person to see what they're really interested in getting from this conversation. Both of you, however, regardless of who is upset, who's not upset or both upset, you have to be direct when you speak. This is very important. Be clear. This is a mistake I used to make. I used to really allow my emotions and feelings to lead my arguments, my discussions with with my partner and what I realized is that they were confused as fuck they didn't understand why I was upset because I myself couldn't really articulate or even understand why I was struggling with whatever the case might have been you have to come in as a partner okay this is your responsibility and you should be held accountable for this what are we talking about what is the purpose of discussing it? Is there a purpose? Okay, and then you can decide whether you should pick your battles or not when it comes to that. What do I want from this? What do I need from this? And what can I do? Okay, we all need to be a part of this discussion. All hands on deck. And sometimes if you need that pause to go think about those five things, go think about them. Do not go into a discussion without having at least a general idea of those five things. That'll make the conversation productive. You're not running in circles. You're not blaming each other. And if you and your partner are struggling with this right now, you know, a therapist will be able to, to kind of ingrain this process. But what you can do is you can write down all of those five points I made and actually use that as a guideline when you argue. And it might feel a little stupid and foreign at the beginning, but it just goes to show that you both are willing to do things that might not be conventional or maybe a little cheesy to make things work, to get you guys arguing in a healthier way, in a productive way. A little side note here. Sometimes there are certain things that you want to bitch about or complain about or discuss, and it's not always meant to be with your partner. You have friends for a reason. There are certain things that you should be able to vent to your other friends about. Now, I'm not saying or encouraging to vent to your friends about your partner. That never really goes well, especially if you're like really in the heat of the moment. You can just talk to them and just say, hey, listen, you know, I had like a really rough day with my man. This is what we're going through. I'm like feeling a little bit like this. I'm thinking of doing this, you know, just venting it out, getting out of your system so that when you go into conversation, sometimes you're a little bit more level headed and clear and you let like the surface level, you know, really thick layer of emotion kind of subside and get tended to outside of a productive argument. So there's little things you can do if you feel like you kind of spiral out of control or are really reactive to take a pause to kind of exert that extra added energy or emotion or anger or disappointment elsewhere. You know, go to the fucking gym, get out of the house, take a brisk walk and then come back home and you guys are both ready to discuss. A rule I've said before, deal with it before bed or if not communicate when you guys will be discussing it. It's always good to have a time, date and plan 
I'm so sorry, but just because you feel like you need some time doesn't mean that you get to fucking go, you know, days on end. You're never going to feel ready. Keep that in mind. You're never going to feel ready to discuss something that might be heavier or might be emotional. There's never going to be a right time, but you need to cap it. You can be graceful and give yourself a few hours and say, you know what? At 6 p.m., we're going to discuss after dinner or tomorrow when I come back from work, let's sit and discuss. That is when we're going to do it. No more than 24 hours, guys. No more than 24 hours. You need to cap it. That's why I always say before bed, make sure you're not going to bed angry because what that does is just ruins the next day and resentment builds this way. It's very tricky to do that. It's I've seen so many relationships go down the goddamn toilet doing that. So cap it before bed, ideally, before end of day, ideally. But if the argument started later on in that day, I understand people are tired. People have you know, responsibilities the next morning, but still prioritize this. Give it a time, give it a date and communicate that with your partner. A big thing when it comes to discussing conflict, you should not be looking at shit through your lens. If your partner is hurt, you will not understand it because you're not them. You're not in their seat. You're not in their position. And so many people say, put yourself in their shoes. A lot of people can't do that. Like that's the goddamn truth. A lot of you guys cannot do that. You say you can, but you really cannot. Okay. I can't sometimes I can't, if I'm hurt, my partner's saying, well, you're coming across like this or, you know, well, I don't understand because I feel like this. I'm like, fuck, like, really? I don't see how you would do that. Like I would do it like this. If I were in your position, it's so easy to be an outsider of somebody else and observe them and like make assumptions and think that we know how they feel or whatever. Stop viewing things from your lens. Okay. When it's time for you to speak about your feelings, you view it from your lens. When you're done speaking about that, remove the lens. Okay. Try and be as impartial. Try and be as stable. You know, I always like to think of a pendulum swinging, right? Like from extreme to extreme. And I'll talk about this concept in another episode because it's super important for all areas of your life. But I always like to think of a pendulum swinging when I'm in an argument. Sometimes it'll swing way too much to the right and I know I'm in one extreme and then way too much to the left and I know I'm in another extreme. The right for me in my head is usually me being feisty and like really getting anxious and boiled up. And then to the left is me shutting down and like breaking down and not speaking. How can you get yourself in that moment after you vocalized how you feel while your partner is talking about their feelings? How can you try and be just an observer, a listener. And if you don't understand something, don't jump and swing the pendulum. You don't need to react. Okay. Be like, I'm sorry that you feel this way. What can we do to make things better or clarify things to them or reassure them? That is the only thing that you need to do when it comes to someone vocalizing their feelings. You're not supposed to understand it. Okay. If you can, that's great. But let's say you can't, what are you supposed to do? right? You guys are just going to argue over and over again, back and forth. I don't understand it. Like, why would you do it like this? Or why did you react like that? Or like, are you crazy? Are you this in your world? You wouldn't do it like that, but this person does it like that. And you have to respect that and honor that you're two different people, right? In relationships, the fundamentals should be quite similar or like on the same page, but everything else is, I mean, we are so different. What's crazy is the fact that you're expecting to understand this other person a hundred percent. You won't, you can't. And that doesn't mean that you're not a good partner or that they're not a good partner for you. It's just, how can I come to terms with our differences here? How can I stop the pendulum from swinging? You know, it's like a meditative state. It's really hard to get there. And I'm not saying that you're going to fucking go into like, oh, you know, meditation mid fucking argument, but just listen, be present, focus on the words, ask questions, curiosity, reassurance, engage in conversation. Okay. And if you feel like it's veering too emotional or if it's veering to someone shutting down, try and bring the pendulum back right into the middle and say, okay, well now what are we going to do? What is our course of action? What can I do for you? What would you like? And here's what I'm thinking that would be best for me. Okay. Patience I know is difficult in these moments. And then it's just like, fuck, I just don't want to talk about this anymore. The problem is when you do that and you shut someone up or you try and fast forward the conversation and you're not being graceful by allowing them to like really talk about how they feel, which might take someone a while. You know, it takes me a while to be honest with you. And sometimes I just need to sound like a broken record for a minute to just really make sure I'm getting my points across. I'm letting everything out. And I need someone to hold space for that because the more you fast forward or shut them down, half of the argument is not getting fixed. So it's just surface level shit that's getting fixed. And I guarantee you this argument will be brought up again down the line. If your partner needs to talk about it for a while, let them. You need to hold space for them. That's part of being in a relationship. You hold space for one another. Okay. You're there for one another. You have to show up for them. Even if you're hurt in that moment, show up for them and they should be showing up for you. 
always assume your partner has good intentions. This is so fucking difficult. Like I'm just thinking of myself in past relationships and past arguments. And I'm like always a little fucking Scorpio detective. Like, bitch, why you say it like that? You know, what What do you mean? Why did you look to the right? Why did you look? to? I'm like very on it. And I mean, I've gotten, of course, a lot better than that because that's just some toxic shit, to be honest with you, and never worked out in my favor. But if you're with your partner and you chose wisely, then you should have trust that they have good intentions, that this is not meant to tick each other off. If you guys are decently healthy, you're not going to sit there and just bad mouth each other. You know, look at it as this person has good intentions. If they're feeling some type of way, If they need some space, if they are hurt, you know, assume that like them talking about this or them telling you that like they didn't like this, that, you know, that you did, for example, don't take it as an attack. Assume that it has good intentions. Assume that they want to make this work. You both should want to make this work. Right. And I think that that's also an important thing to bring up in argument, especially if you feel like it's rocking a little bit too much from right to left on that fucking pendulum. You really need to be like, I want this to work. I want us to resolve things and I want us to get out of this better. And I want us to, to embrace afterwards and to be good. I know we can, you know, I know it's difficult. I know there's a lot going on. Just breaking the conversation up like that guy does fucking wonders. And I don't understand why more people don't do that. I've implemented that and I'm pretty stubborn sometimes. And even when my feelings are hurt, I sometimes just make it be known to break down like the ego battle sometimes that I feel between me and my partner, for example, that sometimes happens in the heat of an argument. Another tip is to make sure that you're not arguing about three different events. Keep it to one argument at a time. And you can even say, look, we'll talk about this and this, but I think we should just start from the beginning. This pissed me off at the beginning. I didn't like when this happened. You know, I feel like we have to deal with that better or like not do that again. Um, And then you can move on once that was resolved. You know, you have to do it one step at a time. You cannot tackle 300 issues all at once. No therapist can, no psychologist can, no psychiatrist can. They have to go by one problem, by one trauma at a time, right? There's a reason for that because we're not able to take it all and somehow fix it. And then there's not, you know, one size fits all solution for all of this. So one argument at a time. If you've been going through the motions, doing all of this, and you feel like there, it's just not productive. It's something's just not registering timeout. Okay. Timeout. Tell your partner, I love you. Grab their hand, hold their hand, reassure them physically. If you can to show a gesture of love and say, Do you want to take a breather? Do we need a breather? Because I feel like we're talking about the same things and there's not a lot of headway. Do you want to reconvene at a different time? Maybe in like half an hour. What works for you? Sometimes that works. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I'm like, as you guys know, I'm just like fucking, can we just deal with this shit and not leave the table till we do? Some people might just be overwhelmed and just need some time to like, okay, like I was way too in my feels. I got to get out of this conversation. It might be triggering for them for whatever reason. Trauma might be coming up for them. So maybe they need just like a little bit of a timeout. And if you notice that's not productive, asking if they require one is important. Don't say we're having a timeout. Don't step in and make a call for the two of you. You both are two different people and you both have to come to a decent compromise when it comes to what are we doing in this moment when shit is going south. Even talking about this when you guys are not fighting is important. Like, how do we want to go about, let's say we get into an argument or an issue. Do we, do we like timeouts? Is that a go for us? Is there like a word we can say in the middle that will just be like, okay, like reality check timeout. Like, is there something that we can do to be proactive about this? Like very successful couples know how to deal with this. I met a couple on vacation when I went with my boyfriend and they're just, they were like an older couple. They were so sweet, you know, retired, just wonderful. And of course me like being a dating and sex coach had to ask them, what is like the secret sauce to a long, healthy, happy relationship? And the guy literally said to me, we argue naked, (laughs) which, okay. Like I, I don't think my first reaction when I'm pissed off is going to be like, let's take off my clothes and like sit and have a serious conversation naked. But he was onto something. A lot of people feel like they are against their partner even if you're not there is sort of this wall that is there and we all understand what that is we all feel it but we need to break that wall and if that means holding each other's hands while we're talking I think that that does wonders it brings you back to reality 
it brings you back to the present moment that we still love each other. That just because we have an argument doesn't mean our relationship is shit. Just because we disagree doesn't mean that like we, we still don't have feelings for one another. The whole point of an argument or disagreement or discussion is for us to be open and transparent. And that's something to celebrate, to resolve it because we want to do better going forward. We want to learn from this experience. We want to know what pissed the other person off, what to do, what not to do, because we don't have the fucking manual for relationships for our specific partner for certain circumstances. We don't know how to deal with all these things. And I think it's important, even if you're not having an argument with your partner right now, to sit and ask what they think might be best. Now, what you think might be best versus what is best for you could look very different too. be open. But also asking them based off of their past experiences, what worked and what didn't is great for you to know. And you should also be involved in that conversation as well and let them know what works and doesn't for you. You know, I let my partners don't know that I'm a very big like I need to resolve conflict ASAP or else my anxiety spikes and I can't sleep. I literally cannot sleep. I need it resolved. I need to know I'm going to bed on a decent note, on a good note. And my partner, he needs some time sometimes. <laughs> so you can see where that's stressful sometimes for me. But we discuss it, right? It's important to have that discussion and to be able to say, okay, if we were to get into an argument, just letting you know this and this and this. But even in the heat of the moment, even if you know that knowledge, you still need the reassurance in the moment because we doubt a lot of things. When emotions are running high, you know, especially when you love each other, you're like trying to make things work. You're getting really uncomfortable. You're you're worried about all kinds of things all at once that you weren't worried about originally that maybe this conversation had nothing to do with. But now you're like, oh, my God, is my relationship shit? Are we going to break up? Like, what's going on? Like, do I pack my fucking bags and leave? Like all of this stuff sometimes runs through people's minds. So it's always important to reassure them during to be proactive and talk about it before shit happens, to be attentive, to really listen, to acknowledge and to be a part of the discussion. You sitting and nodding and not saying nothing is not being a part of it. I, a lot of people have told me, well, I don't know what to say. How do you feel? Well, I feel upset. Why? That's your time to talk. Or if you are blanking out, you can say, look, I'm blanking out. I'm having a hard time, but I want you to know that I'm acknowledging how you feel. And I know that you're upset about this and I want us to do better. That's what you can say. You should not have nothing to say. There is no excuse. There is absolutely no excuse. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening on my podcast, anywhere you listen to podcasts, I really appreciate you guys being here and taking the time to watch and listen to this episode. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell for the notifications so that when I upload, you know, and please rate my podcast five large and in charge stars. Anywhere you listen to podcasts is E dash Roddick by Eden Middleman. Follow my podcast. It does help me so much. And I don't want you guys to miss out on some really fun, special content that's coming your way. Take care guys. I'm wishing you all the best of luck in your relationships and in all areas of your life. You deserve it. And I'll see you guys back here very soon. Bye.